you know, uh, interestingly, the French don't like the English more than the Germans because their history goes back to the Middle Ages. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, that's. It makes Dr. Borman to, you know, he was a German studying French, you know, so you're not always so that well as to that works. Yeah. Yeah, there's still, boy, uh, I was with a friend in Paris once, a long time ago, and we went to a restaurant, and he had been in Germany for two years, and he was telling me about Germany, he was talking, using some German words, and two people looked at him like that, and I said, what's this speak English, because it was pretty obvious, this was not, you know, 10 years after the war, 15 years after the war, you know, a lot of, a lot of old grudges still there, that this was in Paris. You know, they didn't want to hear Germans. But where, 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 where was I going? Anyway, my friend. Your sailing friend. My sailing friend, the CIA guy, says, yeah, my father is very intense. I said, oh, tell me about it. And he said he was in the American Army. He was a sergeant. He was killed there. And he said, when my mother got the telegram, now he's, he's two years old, so he's recounting this in terms of what his mother told When... Uh, my mother got the telegram uh, announcing he had been killed. He had been killed in a battle, I think, because the Germans were fighting fiercely. I mean, they were no pushover. I mean, they had good equipment, well disciplined. It was not a, it was a slog all the way across Europe. In fact, the arm, the surrender of Germany didn't come until May of 1945, almost a year after the Normandy invasion and the invasion from the south. Somebody ought to mention that there was an invasion of the South of France at the same time. But anyway. So he said, yeah, my father's very nuts. And he was in the uh, American Army. He was a sergeant. He was killed in a battle. Okay. So we're talking. And he said, when my mother got the telegram, the telegram announced his death. He'd been killed in battle. Uh, and where did she want the remains sent? Now, this is an interesting part of the story. And the mother said, I don't want you to send his body home. I want the money that you would spend sending that body home used for the war. So he's buried in an American cemetery outside of Mexico. So <clears throat> anyway, one more aspect of that story. Uh, I said to her, and I said, you know what, we were going to London, and then we're going to see some old buddies, and then we're going to go into France. There's no reason why we can't stop in this and visit your mother's grave. So, what does he do with that time? That moment, he starts crying. You mentioned to me yesterday you had been to visit a concentration camp in Oh, yeah. Okay. The, what happened is when people were rounded up. Um, Pauline had a great map last week. I, she didn't share it with me. So, but uh, the, there were these camps all over France. There were, there were dozens upon dozens of them. They were transit camps. Right. Like, Toulonsi was a transit camp, but if you went to Auschwitz, that was an extermination yeah. camp. And we talked about Dachau, which you had. Um, That's it. Um, that was a labor camp and uh, yeah, yeah. They, what they, the question this morning from Shannon was, uh, why were they all men in that story, the story of position? Um, they just happened to be. Yeah. I think it was because they were probably just still able to work. They were the laborers. Yeah. They were the ones that had been Yeah, yeah. Off. They were labor camps in Dutch College. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. um, the transit camps, what happened, to, let's say you heard about the roundups in Paris and things like that. Um, you know, if you were a Freemason or a communist or a Jew or a gypsy or you were badly handicapped in some cases, you, know, if you were sent to a, a camp, you would be picked up, sent to a temporary holding camp, and then when there was room on one of these cattle trains, you'd be shipped off to the camps, the extermination of labor camps in the East. Um, and, uh, we visited one in Neymi, it's called Neymil. It's actually a town. I'll write it down, excuse me, sure. Uh, chalk. This is, this is a place that's ready, readily accessible. And it's outside of a place that a lot of people go to, and that's in southern France. It's near a town called aix en provence Which all my French ones know about. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just love 